Good evening, Temple of Deliverance. Good evening. Good evening. And we'd like to welcome those of you who are not members and those of you who are watching online. Welcome to the New Year's Revival Service. And we're in here tonight to give God praise. Why don't you just stand on your feet? If you got two feet and you walked in here all tonight, why don't you just stand and give God some praise? By putting those hands together and opening up your mouth and putting a praise on your lips. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier.
Grace in heavenly Father, before we ask for anything, Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. Lord, you've been good to us, oh God. It rained so hard this morning, Lord, on our way to work. I just want to tell you thank you, Lord. Somebody didn't make it, Lord, but I want to tell you thank you, Lord. Thank you for life, God. Thank you for help. Thank you for strength. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. I got to thank you in my heart, God. You've been good, God, to all of us, God. We shouldn't be here, Lord. It's 2023, y'all. We should be thanking God. Somebody didn't make it. It ain't because they didn't want to make it because God allowed us to be here one more time. Lord, you blessed the revival this whole month, God. Bless the speakers. Give us a word to encourage our heart that we may share the word to the world out there that don't know you, God. Touch tonight, God. Touch the heart of a broken heart, God. Let them know that you're concerned about them. You're good, God. You're good, God. You're good, God. You're so good and so merciful, God. Thank you for this place. Thank you for Pastor Hawkins, his wife, his family. We lift them up before you, God. Bless them, God. Keep his heart, God. Encourage his heart, God. Whatever he needs, you give it to him, God. We're here to help him, God. We're here to serve him as he serves you, Father. Bless the servant tonight, Lord. And then, God, you... Bless someone to come down saying, what must I do to be saved? That's what it's all about, God. Saving souls, God. We come to lift you up and praise your name today, God. Thank you for this opportunity one more time. In your son Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I'll be reading from the uh, Old Testament, coming from the book of Jeremiah, verse 20, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I have, that I think towards you, 
said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Of course, I've read to you in the, from, the, from the Old Testament coming from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. May the blessing of the Lord be added to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word.
our God is so faithful. He's so faithful to us. Hallelujah. And we just come to declare that tonight. It's a very familiar song. Feel free to join in and worship with us on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're faithful, 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 faithful is our God. Yeah. 
Well, if you love the Lord tonight, let it be known by showing some signs. If God has made a way for you, let it be known by showing some signs. If you know that God is good all the time, let it be known by showing some signs. And the Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let's praise him for our healing. Let's praise him for our salvation. Let's praise him for our deliverance. Let's praise him for our joy. Let's praise him for our peace. Let's praise him because he's worthy of all the glory and worthy of all the honor and worthy of all the praise. There's nobody like him. Take about 30 seconds, just lift up your hands and begin to speak words of adoration, and words of praise as we prepare to hear from heaven in just a few moments. Oh God, let the atmosphere be right for God to visit us, even the great, even greater. Yes, Lord, how we bless you, how we love you, how we adore you. How we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Oh God, how we look to you, the strength of our life, the joy of our salvation, the lifter of our head. Have your way even now, Lord. Bind the power of darkness right now. Bind Satan right now. Bind every hindering spirit. Let the blood of Jesus minister to our good. Touch us, oh God, while we wait and touch us while we pray. Yes, Lord, have your way tonight. Lord, wilt thou not revive us again? Revive us again, Lord. Breathe on us again, Lord. Touch us again, Lord. Speak to our hearts again, Lord. For we need you, Lord. We cannot make it without you. Oh, God, have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Our families are on the altar. Our souls are on the altar. Our loved ones are on the altar. Our needs are on the altar. Lord, we need you right now. You're the lifter of our head, the joy of our salvation. Thank you for victory. Thank you for the victory, Lord. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for our renewed strength. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Clap your hands again, and then you may take your seats for just a moment. We are glad to be in God's house on tonight. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. And I'm thankful on this evening that the Lord hath brought us together. Uh, we've lived through some storms last night and today and I know that we are thankful that God have kept us I don't know did anybody lose any power or any damage done to your homes well, we thank God that God have kept us we thank God that God have kept us well, we've seen some great storms and I'm sure that hindered some from being with us on tonight, but nevertheless, we are here, and God is here, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and our evangelist is here, amen. She didn't just come from down the street or across town or around the corner she had to drive here from Jackson Tennessee and we thank God that she was able to make it God bless our first lady evangelist Catherine Crawford Hawkins we thank God for her all of the people of God oh this music department was awesome tonight God bless. We're just getting them, uh, allowing them to get their breather because they're coming right back. 
and going to give us a sermonic selection before uh, the speaker of the hour shall come. Uh, she's not a stranger here at Temple of Deliverance. Uh, she's a great woman of God. Uh, we love her ministry. She's anointed of God. God has gifted her in the prophetic ministry uh, that when she speaks, God is speaking through her to give us a rhema, a prophetic word that will change our situations. And as we start this new year out in 2023, I know God's going to give us change, but good change, good change. He's going to take us higher and going to do great things for us. God's going to bless us. Matter of fact, the revival had already started this past Sunday, and we're just continuing the revival throughout this month. Looked like January hadn't been kind to us the last couple of years. Last year, we had to cancel the revival because of snow in Memphis throughout the month. A year before that, the weather was so bad, uh, we could not do what we wanted. And here again in January, uh, the enemy just doesn't want us to go forth, but we're going forth anyway. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is the year of renewed strength here at Temple of Deliverance. Come on and lift your hands with me and say, I have renewed strength. I have renewed strength. This tremendous singing praise team and mighty musicians that accompany them are going to come back with the sermonic selection. And then after they have concluded their selection, we're going to stand and receive our guest evangelist, prophetess, and speaker for this first night of revival in the month of January 2023, evangelist. Sharon say white law. Those of you that's watching online, tell your friends and your neighbors that you're getting ready to hear a word from the Lord. Put your hands together now in anticipation of the word.
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so that it is so. Amen and amen. If he's your strength on tonight, you ought to open your mouth and give God a high praise. Come on, if he's your strength tonight, come on and bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, come on, let's bless his holy name. Come on, he is our God. He's everything that we need from the rising of the sun to the very going down of the same it is our Lord who is so worthy to be praised bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me I come to bless his name bless the name of the Lord come on open your mouth come on let's glorify his name for he's worthy and we bless him when I think the goodness of Jesus and that I crossed over to 2023 my soul cries out hallelujah I thank God for saving me I thank God for breathing my body this second I honor the Lord on tonight because he is God he's everything that I need and everything that I want father I am so grateful for your grace and for your mercy. For you are our God. You are everything that we need. And Father, we honor you on tonight. We pray right now, God, in your presence that you would minister your word to us, O oh God. Give us ears that shall hear in the spirit which is speaking to the church. Crucify flesh. That no flesh glories in your presence, but that you may be glorified. Father, have your way. God, I yield to your divine cash. I'm on the whole. Yes, God, I yield to your divine will. Have thine own way. Minister your word that our hearts are ready to receive, our ears to hear what you're saying to us. We bind the works of the enemy tonight. We come against every distraction of the enemy. We come against every setup of the enemy. And so God, we say, have your way. Save some lost soul on tonight. Somebody needs salvation. Save tonight. A backslider needs to come back to you, God. Bring them back into your fold in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs deliverance tonight. Deliver. By the power of the Holy Ghost. And we say thank you for it now. Huh? Hey God, in the name of Jesus, revive us tonight. Revive us tonight. Bring restoration. Bring restoration. Bring renewal on tonight. And we say thank you for it right now. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. Who died on the cross for our sins. That we may have a right to eternal life through the shedding of his blood. This we ask in your son Jesus' name and we pray that it is so and so it is. Amen. Would you just touch yourself, whether you're in this building or watching virtually, and say, I'm in the right place at the right time. And God has a blessing in store for me. Now, if you really believe that, open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. I don't know about you, but I feel miracles, signs, and wonder. I call Shabbat myself. I don't know about you, but I expect God to do even greater works, greater things in our lives. Don't you know sometimes we just got to shift ourselves? And open up our mouths and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you in this. Thank you in that. Thank you for what you brought me through. Thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Anybody have a thank you tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
You've been so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. You woke me up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. God, I didn't die with that sickness. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't die with that pain in your body. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't die in that accident. Woo! Somebody on Carbon so thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's been so good to us. He's been He's been so kind to us. And I owe God the praise on tonight. In fact, I owe God every moment that I breathe the breath of life. I owe God a thank you. And I thank him for his grace and his mercy. Why don't you just shake yourself and say, thank God I'm still here. Somebody is not alive right now. And they can't even shake themselves. Why are you shaking yourself? It reminds me that God has given me the activities of my limb. It reminds me that the plot of the enemy did not work. That's why you got to shake yourself and give God a right now prayer. Give him a right now glory. Glory, 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 glory. I'm glad I'm still here. And it's by the grace of God. Grab your sword. Grab the word of the Lord. Whether it's a physical Bible, whether it's electronic. Grab the word of the Lord and go to Judges chapter 16. And I'm going to read one verse, uh, two verses here in the word of the Lord. Judges chapter 16 and verse 28. I honor the Lord on tonight for I am saved and I am sanctified. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I got a mind to live right and to serve the Lord. I thank God for this mind because I remember when I didn't have this mind. But I thank God I have a mind to serve the Lord. And I live this life so that I can live again. I honor the great angel of this house, this awesome man of God, the leader, the pastor of this great temple, temple of deliverance. Help me celebrate Bishop Cousin Milton Hawkins. We honor you on tonight, man of God. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come to minister to God's people and to the fragrance of this house, Evangelist Catherine Hawkins. We honor you on tonight. God bless you. And to the elders and the ministers of the gospel, to all of the mothers, the evangelists, every prophet, every prophetess, as I say to every man, woman, boy, and girl, I honor the God in you. Praise God for those that are watching virtually on tonight. We're finding out in this season there's more that's watching us virtually than those that are in the building. That's the season that we're in. But we thank God that people are able to get the word of God wherever they are. And we thank God for technology and those who have joined us across the world. Judges chapter 16 and verse 28 declares, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Word of the Lord is blessed for the people of God. Would you open your mouth and say God's strength, God's strength. in the assignment. One more time, open your mouth. That's what I want to talk to you tonight about God's strength, God's strength. in the assignment. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. God's strength 
in the assignment. There must be a reality among all of us that are still here in this earth, all of us that are still breathing the breath of life. There must be a reality that we must come to our senses to realize that God has kept us here with purpose in mind. God has allowed us to continue to breathe the air that we breathe not for our own agendas. But God has kept us here with the reason in mind. The greatest challenge for us is that we rejoice over crossing over into a new year. We rejoice that uh, we had some challenges in 2022. We had some challenges as we look back over the year. But we all can have the same testimony. God kept us and we're still here and crossed over to 2023. We must be in a posture and a place in this hour that we cannot have church as usual. Yeah, the charismatic church, yeah. Uh, and the Pentecostal church is infiltrated by the emotionalism of church services. We are consumed by the good sound. Oh, what a beautiful sound in this atmosphere tonight. What beautiful music and singing and ministering that we've heard. But we cannot get stuck in just the sound of church. Just the movement of church. Just the emotionalism of church. And miss God. Oh, we cannot uh, go back to our formalities of Christianity. Y'all Y'all know during COVID 2020 and 2021, people were praying and asking God to deliver us from COVID-19. Uh, the church has got shut down, uh, only saying uh, that uh, no more than 50 could gather. In that time and that season, people were praying for God to bring us out at home praying and said I can't wait to get back to church people dying all over the world oh COVID-19 didn't have what it was not colorblind it didn't care what your color was it didn't care how much money you had or you did not have it didn't care where you live where you didn't live it didn't care your social background COVID-19 affected everybody his life in an effect in everybody's life we found ourselves uh, praying more during COVID-19 yeah we found ourselves crying out to God to heal bodies uh, yeah we realized that many of us caught COVID-19 many of us had the virus fear gripped us uh, because the numbers uh, of how many people died with COVID-19 fear gripped you when COVID-19 hit your body uh, but can I tell you uh, that more have lived through COVID-19 uh, than those who have died uh, God kept us uh, through COVID-19 he's still keeping us question I have for you tonight are you still praying as hard now as you were then are you still talking to God about your relationship with him are you still seeking his face are you still saying God I don't want nothing in my heart that is not pleasing to you or have you gone back to your own traditional ways have you gone back to eating and drinking and being merry have you forgot about your vow to God you said God if you heal me I'll serve you God if you bring me out of this God, I'm going to do whatever you told me to do. Here we are. We've crossed over into 2023. And some of y'all have forgotten about what you told God you were going to do. Now we're back in the building. 
Africa telling you, come on, clap your hands. Come on, come on, give God praise and you still now, you're back to just your arms crossed. You're back to just waving your hand. But in the pandemic, people said, I can't wait until I get back to church so that I can give God an unconditional praise. Don't you know you still owe God an unconditional praise? Yes. We have gone back to being comfortable in Zion. Yeah, we don't go back to choosing when we come to church and when we don't want to come to church. Here we are, we back to making excuses about why we're not going to do this and why I'm not going to do that. But if we allow our minds to just go back, go back. 22 months ago, 24 months ago, go back and look at where God has brought us from. We owe God everything. Shame on you. You act like God owe you something. You act like God owe you the breath that you breathe. God does not owe us anything, but we owe God everything. That's why the Bible tells us in Psalm 150 he says let everything that have breath set to praise ye the Lord. The prerequisite for praise is breath in your body. Oh, the prerequisite for praise is just having breath in your body. You don't have to have money in your pocket to praise God. You don't have to have your prayers answered to praise God. But because breath is in your body, we owe God a praise. We must brag on him. We must boast on his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Because God has brought us this far. We can't afford to go back through our formalities and rituals of worship. What do you mean? No, I'm not talking about format of worship. I'm talking about your familiarity of worship. What do you mean? You come through going through the motion of church. You show up and just feel good because you got to church. Or you sitting up scrolling from service to service on Facebook and YouTube and it becomes a movie or a show. While you sitting there and see who's preaching huh? sitting there and see who's hooping huh? and then when you don't like what somebody is saying huh? and you don't like how they're preaching huh? you scroll to the next service huh? or you sit inside the building huh? Time out, I don't like to hear them preach huh? I don't like to hear them sing huh? but when I think about huh? that God huh? he chose me huh? when the others didn't want to do it huh? he chose me I've got to give God that unconditional service that no matter who stands up, no matter who has the microphone, I entered into his gates with thanksgiving. I entered into his courts with praise. I don't care who preach. I can get a word out of the word of God. We're stuck in personalities. We're stuck with who's behind the podium. I don't care what you say. If God used a donkey to speak to Balaam, he'll use anybody to give you the word of the Lord in your time of need. It's time to rise up, O Zion. It's time for us to be reminded, reminded of what all God has done. God says to us that we must deny ourselves. 
We must take up our cross and follow him. We don't want to deny ourselves. We want to put ourselves on pedestals. We want people to praise us and not praise God. Yeah, you want that position and that title. Why? Because you want people to call you by your title. Can I tell you something? You don't ever have to call me by my title. My name when I was born was Sharon Renee C. That is my identity so if you say share it I'm not gonna get an attitude why they call me by my first name because that is my name the problem in the body of Christ we use the callings of God and made them our own we are not we are not in the place that we are to make what God has called us to be our own we have made gods out of ourselves. We want people to bow down to us. What God has called me to is not for Sharon to be glorified. But what God has called me to is for him to be glorified. So we're making one another feel less than in our churches. Making them feel that if they don't have a title position, they're nothing. Uh, when we all of God's children, uh, he said, if you offend the least of my little ones, uh, you might as well have, uh, oh, uh, you might as well have a yoke around your neck uh, and to be cast into the sea. Now, how is it that we treat everybody like they're nobody if you're not bowing down to me? No, that's not the love of God. That's not the love that Jesus showed among the people as he walked the earth. I'm challenged by y'all wonderful people. Can't nobody touch you. Can't nobody say nothing to you. But the only way you can reach the people, you got to be among the people. And you got to be touchable. You got to be touchable. Jesus was touchable. That's the only way the woman with the issue of blood. She said if I can but just touch his clothes I shall be whole. Why? Because he was among the people. He was close enough that he could be touched. Uh, we must understand that we all have an assignment there is a task there is work to be done by all of us God called all of us to do the work of the evangelist <laughs> what is the work of the evangelist it's about souls yeah, 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 yeah. The work of the evangelist is all about souls. Listen, in Walmart, you don't have time to give somebody the name of your church and tell them to come to your church. But in this hour, you need to tell them about Jesus. You need to tell them Jesus saved. You need to tell them what God has done for you. And tell them just like I'm standing here. I I should have lost my mind. I should have lost my mind. But if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, tell them about Jesus. Don't just agree with them in their trouble. Give them the solution to their problem. See, we agree with people's problems, but we don't give them solution. Uh, Jesus is the answer. For the world today, Andre Cross said, Above him, there is no other. It says that Jesus he is the way. We all have a task that must be completed, we all have assignments that must be done. The Bible tells us in John 9 and verse 4, He says, I must work the works of Him. Who have sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. 
I cannot make you work. I must choose to work myself. I can't make you have a desire to work. All I can do is give you the word of God. We must have self-motivation. We must have self-determination. You must make your mind up that you are going to do what God has given you to do. I got to work while there's breath in my body. I got to work while I'm able to use my voice. And even if I don't have a voice, uh, they have sign language there. Or you can write down whatever it is you need to say. But while I have the mind, I got to accomplish what God has given me to accomplish. We must understand as we even look here in our text, the main character of our text tonight deals with a man by the name of Samson. Samson's story is a very interesting, interesting story. He's a very interesting character in the Bible. Many times we think of Samson. We only think of Samson being tricked by Delilah. But there's more to Samson than just this. Uh, when you look at Samson, we consider him a child that is born to a woman that is barren according to the word of the Lord. He, though she is barren, but the angel comes and tells her that she's going to have a son. Why is God allowing this woman that is barren to have a son? The Bible says in Judges chapter 13 and verse 1, he says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them, delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. The children of Israel did evil again. Ask yourself a question on tonight. Am I doing evil again? Is God allowing me to go through this because I've done evil again? God decides that now that the, the, that the children of Israel have been uh, uh, under the control of the Philistines, he's now going to send a deliverer. He's now going to send Samson for an assignment. He sent his Samson and he puts him in the womb of a woman that is barren. Uh, a woman that cannot have children but God sends an angel to say to her, you're going to have a son. and He is going to be the deliverer of Israel from the Philistines. Samson has an anointed purpose in the earth. His anointed purpose is to come to the earth. God not only brings him to the earth, but he gives his mother instructions while she's carrying the deliverer. He gives her instructions and tell her that she cannot have strong drink. She cannot drink wine. She cannot touch any unclean thing. For this is the Nazarite covenant. While you're carrying him, you must remain holy unto God. While this son sets his in your wound, you got to remain holy and deny your flesh so that the deliverer can come forth. Can I pause there and tell you what I hear in the spirit? God has you on earth because you are somebody's deliverer. Oh, that deliverance is in you doing what God says for you to do. Oh, this woman, this woman, oh, she must be, she must keep herself clean. Not only does she must operate according to the Nazareth, Nazarite covenant, Samson's anointing is also based on the Nazarite covenant. He couldn't cut his hair. His hair is long. It's long is a sign that he was obeying the word of God. 
God. Samson had to remain separated from the world. He had to live a life of separation. He was set apart, but he was anointed to do the assignment in the earth, not be driven by his emotions nor his flesh. Oh, but God gives Samson the responsibility to come to the earth to be the deliverer of God's children. Something happens to Samson. Samson gets up to age with Samson is now driven by his own fleshly desires. Samson wants his flesh fulfilled because the Bible says that Samson sees a woman of Timnit, sees a woman from the enemy's camp, a woman from the camp of the Philistines. And what does Samson say, father, mother, go get her for me, for she pleases me well. He sees her, and seeing her, he has a mindset that I want her so that she can please me. Uh, this is messed up. Why is this so messed up? Because God only brought him to earth not to lay with the enemy, but fight against the enemy. How many of you are laying with the enemy? You're laying in fornication. You're laying in adultery. And God has called you to come higher in him, but you have fleshly desires fleshly ways that is causing you not to function in the assignment that God has given you we all must work we all must complete our task but we see Samson here not only does he his mother and father get the woman from Timnith but he goes and he marries her after marrying her and while he's on his way down to the feast the Bible said that he kills a lion he kills a lion and after he's been down with the Philistines Philistine for over some time the Bible said that he comes back and he sees the carcass of the lion and in the lion is honey the unclean thing the thing that is dead and he reaches in a dead thing and pulls something sweet up out of it how many of you all are touching the dead thing huh? because what's in it is something sweet huh? oh you know God told you to leave that man alone huh? you know he told you to leave that woman alone huh? he's been touching you and telling you leave those drugs alone huh? don't drink any alcohol huh? but you find a sweet spot in the sin and it has captured your attention when God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. But you thought you can get away with it because it was so sweet. But it was in a dead thing. That's why some of you done got trapped up and caught up with the wrong people, with the wrong crowd, trying to fulfill that emptiness because there's a sweet conversation in it. There's sweet fellowship in it. But it's dead because it's not leading you to God. It's pulling you away. <laughs> Samson gives the sweet honey to his mother and father. And never tells her them where it came from. He's now disobeyed the will of God. How many times have we disobeyed the will of God? But guess what? God will forgive us if we would just repent. If we would just turn from our wicked ways. Samson refused to deny his flesh. He was more concerned with the fulfillment of his flesh than his purpose and his assignment. We got to watch out for the assignment of the enemy that comes against you. The Bible tells us what the devil is doing. The Bible tells us in John 10 and 10 that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I'm challenged by us to know what the plan of the enemy is and we still fall in his trap. 
God warns us that he's coming to steal. He's coming to kill and to destroy. And we don't get up with our minds on serving God. We don't get up with a fervor to fight against the wiles of the devil by putting on the whole armor of God. We complain about what the devil is doing instead of casting him out. The Bible said if you resist the devil, he will flee. Samson was too full of his flesh. He was so full of his flesh that he was all about woman after woman. He used his strength. God allowed the anointing to come upon him, the strength of his hair and his obedience. God had given him the strength and the power he had to fight against the enemy. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 10 and 27 that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. People want to be anointed so somebody can say, oh, she's anointed. Oh, he's anointed. No, God is anointing you to come against the kingdom of the devil. God is anointing you that you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God is anointing you that we see the manifestation of miracle signs and wonders. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. People have changed. People have changed going through the place of going through the formalities of preaching just to say that they have a good sermon but it's not anointed. People can sing but they're not anointed. People can function as ushers and deacons but they're not anointed. You get the anointing is what's going to destroy the yoke. That even if I'm ushering, I see the devil walking in. And I begin to bind the devil at the door before the devil gets to walk in there. I see him coming. Deacons ought to not just be about the business of the church, but they ought to be full of the Holy Ghost when they can see the devil and bind the works of the enemy. I don't have to wait until I get here to be a wonder, but I bind the devil in my house. I lay hands on myself and tell the devil get out of here I know the Bible said when you're sick to call on the elders uh, but you got to learn how to call on God for yourself first you got to learn how to lay hands on yourself first Samson had a responsibility God raised him as one of the judges for Israel but Samson misused the anointing of God Samson used the anointing to kill the lion. He used the anointing. Why? To tie the tails of the foxes when he got angry that his wife told her people the riddle, the answer to the riddle. He used the anointing to retaliate. He didn't use the anointing the way God had given it to him to deliver his children. Samson used the anointing to impress people. He showed off the lion. He showed off what he had accomplished and all that he'd done. He showed his authority and he could have whoever he wanted to have. But Samson was missing God. He was missing God because he was not doing his assignment. Whenever you miss God, God has to raise somebody else up that's going to do his will. Samson found himself in a rough place. What is that rough place? He found himself loving a woman by the name of Delilah. If you read the entire text, Delilah is the fourth woman that he had been with in that scripture. And the Bible says that he comes to Delilah. And when he comes to Delilah, he loves Delilah. Delilah begins to ask him because the Philistines, his enemy wants to know where is his strength. 
The enemy that he's supposed to be defeating now wants to know what's going to take him down. Uh, Delilah, he stuck on having a woman in his bed. Delilah, we're going to pay you money if you can just find out where is his strength. Oh, we know he's going to fall for it because look at his record. Every woman that he sees that he wants, he goes after that woman. Don't you know, I grew up on Kellogg's cornflakes. My dad and them would buy us uh, cornflakes. Uh, why? Because uh, every time they bought sugar flavor fl- uh, cereal, uh, we would eat them at one setting. Uh, but they decided we buying them some cornflakes uh, because they're not going to eat all of that up uh, because they don't like it because it doesn't have sugar on it. Uh, and so they raised us on cornflakes. Uh, any other flavor cereal that came in the house, uh, it was just a bonus to our breakfast but I looked at a box of cornflakes recently it has the same Kellogg's cornflakes it has the same ingredients but the box looks totally different I don't care how different the box is I still don't want cornflakes what are you saying woman of God the devil will bring you what you like and he'll dress it up in a different box in a different dress in a different suit in a different flavor in a different time why because the enemy wants to entice you with what you like and you keep falling for the trap of the enemy but I came all the way from Jackson Tennessee to tell somebody listen I need you not to be tricked by the enemy. The devil is coming in different forms and fashions, but he's enticing you. He's tempting you with what you like. And the Bible said that there is no temptation that is coming to man. That God will not give us a way of escape that we able to bear it. That we're dealing with some hard times. I know that we've had some struggles. I know we've been in a place where we've been praying for God to work it out. But the Lord told me to tell you don't get distracted by what looks different. For the enemy, he doesn't want you to complete your assignment. But I you in this place I, I gotta do what the Lord told me to do the Bible said that Delilah she took the challenge to find out where is where is Samson where is his strength where is his power Samson playing games with the light. He lied to her and told her, if you take seven braids and tie them up, that I will be with. And here's the light. She got the braids and tied them up and said, come here, enemy. Come here, Philistines. Samson, the Philistines, they come upon you. The Bible said that Samson stood up and shook himself. And he came against his enemy. The Bible said Delilah didn't stop there. She said, Samson, you are making a fool of me. Why am I asking you? And you keep lying to me. Tell me where is, where is your strength? She kept on afflicting him until he said unto her, Listen, Delilah, listen here. If you bind me fast with new ropes that have never been occupied, then I Stop flirting with the enemy. 
drink my wine because I want to. I'm gonna sleep around because I desire. But can I tell you, the devil, he doesn't want your car. The devil is not after your house. But the devil, he is after the anointed. He doesn't want you to be anointed. He wants the power. Of the Holy Ghost to come out of you. Tell the devil, no way, no way. Yeah! I gotta get out of here. But the Bible says that when, when the light put the, the ropes that had not been occupied on to Samson. The Bible said that Samson, he said, here I am. You cannot take me down. When the enemy came against him, he braved all of the ropes that was on his arms and they looked like three. Delilah got angry angry with Samson and say here thou hast mocked me and told me lies where your strength is and he is Samson he told her another lie but the fourth time the Bible said that Samson told her all of his heart you better watch who you give your heart to you better watch who you tell what's in your heart he said if you cut off my hair my strength will be gone the bible said that Delilah made him sleep in her lap watch out whose lap you are sleeping in watch out whose bed you're laying in watch out who you're talking to what conversations that you are having the enemy he wants to know where is the secret of the anointing on your life the bible said she had an enemy a philistine to shave his hair and when he was sleeping she said Samson the Philistines be upon you the Bible said he stood up as he did the previous time but he found out even when he shook himself the anointed had departed the power of God had left him. Whatever, whatever you do in 2023, don't lose the anointing. Whatever you do, don't sell out to the enemy. Yeah. Whatever you do. Do what God said do. The Bible said that they got Samson. They bound him and they took out his eyes. Watch what you look at. It will become what blinds you that your flesh is more pleased than keeping your eyes on God. You're facing trials and tribulations. Said, Oh God, I don't know what to do, but my, my eyes are upon you. My eyes, I gotta look unto the hills from which come it. My help, my help. While you're standing, 
Keep your eyes on God. The enemy don't want you to keep your spiritual eyes. He wants you to be full of your carnal sight. What fulfills your flesh? And not do the will of the Father. Samson had an assignment in the earth. Only one reason that he was born. To be the deliverer of God's people. You don't know why you're still here. While you're playing church. You don't know your purpose in its totality. You know what God has called you to do. That mother that couldn't have a child, but God put you in the womb. That mother that was raped and molested. People call it a mistake, but God called it purpose. And you came forth for an assignment in the earth. If you have failed to your flesh in this assignment, do like Samson did. They took his eyes out. They locked him up. While he's locked up, his anointing started coming back. Sometimes God would put us in that place of isolation so that the anointing, hallelujah, and the strength of God can go higher in you. But you understand that you're nothing without God. I don't have time to play games with church folk. In fact, I'm sick of church. I want the move of God. I, I want the move of God that strengthens us for this journey. I want the move of God that we see the manifested, manifested hand of God moving among his people. Their lives are changed, not just we had a good dance tonight. No, did you change? Samson had one more chance to change. One more chance to repent for not staying focused to his God assignment. His hair had grown back. And they said, go get Samson. See, they didn't realize what they were doing. They didn't keep shaving his hair. They, they, they weren't paying attention because if his hair grows back, his anointing comes back. If his hair grows back, the power that was in him when we cut it off is coming back. They, they, they weren't paying attention. God is going to allow people to miss who you are. So when the anointing is ready to be displayed by God, they're going to wonder what happened to her. What happened to him? God put me in a place that he would equip me with the anointing. The Bible said, they said, go get Samson. They're going to make sport of him. He came in led by a little boy. He gets there and they laughing over Samson. But Samson said, God, I got one more chance to do what you called me to do. Samson called unto the Lord, Lord, Lord my God, remember me. Uh, remember me, I'm the one, God, that you brought to the earth to be the deliverer of your people. Remember me, God, I pray thee. In other words, he was saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Sorry, Lord. I pray that you strengthen me. I pray only this once, oh God, that I may at once avenge of the Philistines for my two eyes. God wasn't giving him the power because his eyes were taken out. God was giving him the power and the anointing again to do what he called him to do. The Bible said, and Samson took hold of the two pillows 
And he told the boys, put the little boy, put my hand on the pillars of the building. And when he put his hand on the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was born upon, the Bible said that Samson said, let me die with my enemies. And he bowed himself with all of his might and the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. I don't want that testimony. I want to do what God told me to do now. I don't want to lose the anointing for nothing and nobody. But God will strengthen us for the assignment. God will give us what we need if we pray and we fast and we get into his word. He'll give us what we need. Because Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my life and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid he will strengthen you the Bible says to us in Philippians chapter 3 it tells us not that I have apprehended but it says but this one thing that I do he says, brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. God's strength be upon you in your God assignment. Father, I've spoken what you've given me to say to your people. You declared in your word in Galatians 6 and verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if you faint not. Give your people strength tonight. What is your strength, God, power to resist the attacks of the enemy? You told us, Father, that we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. We pray tonight, God, that you forgive us now. Forgive us, God, for any work that you've given us to do that we have not done. And this time, God, you've given us another turn a chance to return and do what you called us to do. So God, we say yes. Yes to your will and yes to your way. God, I pray for your people to watch out for the setups of the enemy. I pray for your people, God, that they understand that suffering is a part of this journey and that they go through the process. Pray for your people tonight that they realize we already have the victory. When Jesus died on the cross and he rose with all power in his hand, we have the victory. We just got to posture ourselves in that victory. And so, God, I declare now, God, that your power and your anointing restore the joy of our salvation. Strengthen the weak. Build your people up. When the enemy has come to tear them down, in the name of Jesus, have your way. In the name of Jesus, Father, you be glorified. I come against the attacks of the enemy against that body. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. God, your divine healing. I come against the torment of the enemy. Against your mind tonight. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I come against depression. I come against the heaviness. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I come against the spirit of suicide. In the name of Jesus. Touch the minds of your people. Touch the minds of your people. Touch the minds of the people. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In the, in the name of 
Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let the power of the Holy Ghost give us strength. Let the power of the Holy Ghost move upon us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we are going to walk in it. We're going to accomplish the assignment. But there's work that must be done. And God, you're going to use us in the earth to do your work. And we say thank you now. Thank you for it now. For we declare in the power of God that it is so. And so it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. Come on, come on, bless the Lord. Thank you for renewed strength. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, thank him. Come on and bless him. He's giving you what you need. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I have what I need to survive. I have what I need to push me up where I am. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey, hey. I feel closer. I feel the presence of God. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the wind of God. I feel the power of God. Bless him tonight. Come on and clap those hands and bless the name of Jesus. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. Come on and bless his name. the name of Jesus bless the name of Jesus I want to be ordered in this house and ask Bishop is it okay to lay hands on your people because I feel a breakthrough in this place I feel the power of the Holy Ghost I feel the anointing of God come on and bless the name of Jesus somebody wants prayer a touch of faith I pray for you. I feel miracles. I feel miracles. I feel miracles. I feel miracles. I feel miracles in this place. Yes, Lord. I feel miracles. I feel miracles. I feel miracles. Yes, go to my sire. Yes, Lord, I feel the hand of God. I feel the power of Yes, God, restore the joy. Bring strength, the strength of God. In the name of Jesus, have thine own way. Yes, God, huh? Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, hey, ho. Oh, my. Thank you now. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, sha ta ta ta. He said, I'm doing it again. He said, I'm doing it again. He said, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. In your life. He said, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. My soul say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Your divine touch. Your divine touch. Your divine touch have thine own way, have thine own way in the name of Jesus. I feel breakthrough, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel fire, I feel the fire. Somebody got to take that baby because I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, in your belly, the pako shatakai, the pako tatamanso. 
the fire of the Holy Ghost have thine own way. Yeah, stir up again, stir up God, move on the inside. In the in the name of Jesus, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. There's a ship, there's a ship in your life. There's a ship in the Holy Ghost. There's a ship. Yes, Lord. It's not comfortable. But God says, say yes. It's not familiar. But he says, say yes. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power. Of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Moving. moving, he's moving. moving. Thank you for your touch. Moving. Thank you for your touch. You, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Superman. Yes, so, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your word. You. That's bringing change in me. Thank you for your word. You. It doesn't matter what your age is. You. God said, I've got a call on your life. Say yes to my will. Say yes to my way. Yes. Yeah. God said, I'm touching your mind. He said, I'm touching your mind. I come against every tormented spirit that torments you in the midnight. I come against the works of the enemy. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. Every tormenting spirit. I even speak to the demon of suicide. I command you in the name of Jesus to stop dancing in her mind. Free her mind tonight. In the name of Jesus. Free her mind tonight. In the name of Jesus. Free her mind tonight. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. We bless him tonight. We bless him tonight. We bless him tonight. Bless the Lord. He said, I'm stirring you up again. He said, I'm stirring you up again. He said, said, greater works. He said, I'm calling you to greater works. I'm calling you to greater assignments. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. yes, yes, Lord. yes, 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 come on while you're standing here, don't be spectating, but open your mouth and bless the Lord, renew strength, God said I'm renewing the strength of his people tonight, he said, Kota Manso, he said, Kota Mansiku. He said, I'm renewing the strength of my people tonight. Oh! He said, Kota Kota Mansiku. He said, Kota Neyoksha. He said, I'm renewing the strength of my people. Some of you have become weak, but there's a stirring in your spirit tonight. Have your way. <laughs> yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. I hear the Lord say, if you would just praise me in this place, God said he'll fill you again. Come on, tell him, fill me again, God. Fill me again. Fill me. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Have your way. 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 Yes, God. There's a pushing. You don't understand it, but there's a pushing that's pushing you forward. You keep saying, no, 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 I'm not worth it, no. But God said, I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you forward. Greater assignment. He said, I'm pushing you forward. Not in your strength, but in the strength of God. Not in your strength, but in the strength of God. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. 
thank you for your healing and we give you praise thank oh my God said to tell you he's turned it he didn't say he turned it around he's turned it that means it's going in a different direction yes Lord come back this way man of God he said I turned it so that you will know without a shadow of a doubt that he is God and he's heard your own prayers give him an unconditional praise right now He's turned it. He's turned it. And you're getting strength. Like you haven't had in a long time. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Shrimp. Your shrimp. Your strength, strength, your strength, strength, your strength, your strength, your strength, your strength, your strength, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost. You already got it. You already got it. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. It's already done. It's already done. By your faith. That is already done. Woo! I'm telling you, we have a victory. You've got victory. <laughs> You've got victory. And it's in the name of you. Oh, the wind of God. New dimensions in God. Word says, He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. The more that you hunger for God and thirst even for the greater anointing you're gonna feel the wind of God even in your belly the fire of God the fire of God in your belly and we give God praise he bless his name He said, I'm doing a new thing. He said, I'm doing a new thing. A new thing. He's doing a new thing in your lives. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Shall you not know it? He said, I'm doing a new thing. Shall you not know it? Oh, Shammai, I have possible. I posted you for the new thing. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, ha, ha, ha. And he said, I bring healing. He said, I bring healing. I bring healing from the inside out. Ah, oh, Jesus. Give God praise. I feel a dance in my feet. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. God's strength in this place. God's strength is in this place. I feel cool. Come on. 
I feel the strength of God moving in this place. Thank you for your strength. Hey, thank you. I just feel the He touches your body. He gives you strength. Oh my. Running in your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we give you praise. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord.
If you receive the word tonight, Hallelujah. open those mouths and give God a right now praise. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, we want to put a seed in the ground. We want to put a seed in the ground. Whatever the seed that you're getting ready to put in the ground, make sure it has a three in it. Three represent the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Three. Three represents the Trinity. God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. We're going to put a seed in the ground on tonight. I'm sowing a seed of $103. Somebody else may want to follow with me with a $103 seed into this good ground. Listen, this is the first revival of the year. Bishop said it started on Sunday. And here we are on the third day of the month. This is January the 3rd, 2023. I want you to get that seed. 103, 53, 33, 23, 13. Somebody even may want to give 223 to represent the year. Get that seed. You're sowing. The means of sowing to give, they can give by Cash App. They can give, give them the five. They can give by give them the five. You can give by PayPal, Temple of Deliverance. Give them the five. And you can text to give. And those inside of the building, you can walk and give. If you don't want to give by electronic giving, Those that are watching virtually, sow into this good ground. This is good ground. I know God did something for you. I know God touched you while he was touching us in here. I know God was delivering you and he was setting you free while you were right there giving God praise. So, put a seed in the ground. The seed that you're about to give tonight. Would you lift that seed or either your electronic device, the seed that you're sowing and those that are watching, I want you to touch your 
your electronic device. I want you to pray. Father, I thank you now for every gift and every giver. Every seed that we're sowing, we put it in this good ground. So given, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And running over, shall men give unto our bosoms. God, we believe your word. That whatsoever we sow, that shall we also reap. Now, God, I pray for your people. That increase comes to their house. I pray for your people right now that every promise that you said, that they shall see the manifestation of every promise. And I declare that it is so. And so it is. In Jesus' name, open your mouth and say, Increase has come to my house. One more time. Increase has come to my house. Now open your mouth and thank God for the increase. Bring your seed and place it here on the altar. Come bring your seed and place it on the altar. Because the increase has come to my house. Increase has come to my house. of the theme of our church for this year. The year of renewed strength. How many got renewed tonight? Can you feel new strength tonight? Come on and shout glory. Come on and shout glory. Come on and shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow. God bless this great woman of God, the prophetess evangelist, Sharon Say Whitelaw. God used you tonight mightily. What a word. We're leaving this place better tonight. Aren't you glad you didn't stay at home? <laughs> oh, my. It doesn't take a whole lot of folks for us to have church. I saw some folks tonight praising God and dancing that I haven't seen in a long time. It was good to see the Lord move on you tonight. 
Well, God's anointing is just powerful. It's nothing that we can do with God's anointing except enjoy it. She gave us so many nuggets. And she taught both the missionaries and the preachers a great lesson. Even though the anointing of God was on her while she was preaching and ministering, she didn't go forth without checking first with the pastor. Did you all see that? God is a God of order. Confusion is always of the devil. It is never of God. And the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. This is a woman of God. This is a woman of God. And we thank God for her ministry gift and the anointing that's on her life. Amen. I'm going to check with the pastor. I think she'll be back. I'm going to check with the pastor. I'm going to look in the mirror and say, you need to bring her back. Amen. Every time she comes, we're blessed. We are blessed. Thank you for coming out. This is the kickoff for our revival for the month of January. And I would encourage you to invite your friends and family every week. Don't let the weather keep, in, keep you home, but keep coming on out because God has something in store for his people. Next week, we'll be going on our consecration. We'll talk to you a little bit about that in the next few days. Let's enjoy this tonight. Take this home with us and enter our house with the presence of the Lord up on us. Glad today for Elder Trevor Nolan from the headquarters jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. Thank God for him. I bless all of you who have come out to share. Is there anyone here that would like to be a member of Temple of Deliverance? Anyone that came that's not a member, but you came? All right. Come on, young lady. Come on, young ladies. God bless. God bless both of these young ladies. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God. All right. I don't see any of our memberships secretaries, but uh, Sister Darissa, you got some paper and some an ink pen. And, all right, if not, find some paper and ink pen so we can get these young ladies' names and numbers and follow up with them. They've come tonight to be members of Temple of Deliverance. The Lord bless both of them in the service. Prophetess, that great word of God has convicted them. We thank God for both of you. If you will go right to, you're right, Elder. We'll get, lead you, Elder Griggs, will lead you and see that young lady at the top of the steps. She'll get your information. Let's welcome our new members. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, those of you that did not give your gifts uh, and leave them at the altar, of course, on your way out, there are uh, receptacles there that you may drop your gifts off if you did not leave them on the altar. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time, then we're ready to go home. Father, we thank you for the outpouring of your spirit on tonight. We thank you for this great woman of God. Thank you for the anointing on her life, for her ministry, Lord, as she travels around the globe to share this great gospel. Strengthen her. The energy that she used tonight, strengthen her. And then let her ride back to Jackson, Tennessee. Be safe. Keep her, Lord, under the hand of the shadow of the Almighty. And God, what you did for us tonight, we will never forget you. Thank you for the renewed strength. Thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke. Thank you, God, for giving us what we desired and what we needed through this word tonight. 
Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And God's people said, Amen. Go in peace and the Lord be with you. God bless you.